Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and today we're going to be talking about Angron and the Siege on Terra. So we're getting into a little bit of the Horus Heresy lore. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments section below. And if you enjoy our content, thank our patrons on Patreon. It is because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. Now, this is going to be a spoiler for basically the, the, the book that describes the Siege of Terra. So if you're reading the Horus Heresy, you're listening to the Horus Heresy, and you don't want... Um, the Siege of Terra spoiled for you, obviously, don't don't watch this. Uh, but with that said, let's get into 40 facts on the demon Primarch Angron and his Siege of Terra. By the time the Siege of Terra commenced, Angron had become fully enslaved to the will of the blood god Korn and his own unquenched bloodlust. Angron had become a massive demonic beast, and a resemblance of grace or majesty was completely extinguished. Instead, the demon Primarch was the embodiment of rage and bloodlust. His gaze alone was enough to send entire regiments into panic. His butcher's nails were hidden amongst hundreds of protruding spikes and tumor-like mutations that sprouted from his cranium. His lips were pulled back to reveal a sinister, bloodthirsty grin that remained permanently fixed. His facial structure was distorted to the point where one couldn't even tell that he was once human. His pale and proud eyes became yellow and demonic as they sunk deep into his face. His augmentic wires that ran across his powerful armor dug themselves into his flesh as his body mutated and fused with his golden baroque armor. A massive collar of corn sat on his neck, both as a protection from psychic powers and a reminder that his soul belonged to the god of blood. Angron had become the true embodiment of rage. He demanded that Horus allow him to directly assault the Imperial Palace, regardless of the fact that the Emperor's powerful psychic barrier around the throne world would more than likely kill the Demon Prince before he found a way to weaken it. When word reached Angron that it would be the Death Guard who would instead be the ones to spearhead the traitor assault on Terra, Angron fell into an incandescent rage and massacred all those within the bowels of the Conqueror who had the misfortune to cross the Demon Primarch's path. Lotaro Seren, the mortal human captive of the Conqueror, feared that if Angron wasn't stopped, he would inadvertently murder the tech priest responsible for attending to the vessel's plasma reactor, putting the Conqueror at risk of a catastrophic explosion. To prevent this, Seren conspired with the Night Lord's captain, Gendor, as well as Karn, to have Angron teleported to the Shifting Maze aboard the Night Lord's flagship, Nightfall, that had been used by Conrad Kurz to torture and kill captives, forcing Karn's hand the 8th captain confronted the enraged demon Primarch himself. Angron informed his equerry that the Dark Gods had whispered to him of Karn's ultimate fate and preordained destiny as the Chosen of Korn. The demon Primarch wished to supplant Karn as the Blood God's Chosen, and so the two battled one another. However, Karn proved unable to match his gene sire's prowess. Before Angron could slay him, Karn placed the teleporter homer on the demon Primarch and had him teleported off the Conqueror and into the bowels of the Nightfall. In the bowels of the Night Lord's flagship, Angron found himself trapped within a labyrinth of singular purpose. At the request of the Night Hunter, the Iron Warrior's Primarch Perturabo had crafted his brother a singular prison, unlike any other, in imitation of Perturabo's own private sanctorum. This special prison was an elaborate labyrinth whose featureless walls and strange geometric designs made it all but impossible to map and therefore escape. Anyone who attempted to mentally map the labyrinth would be hopelessly knotted in turns that should have been physically impossible. Even after trying scores of times to map the labyrinth, an individual would only manage more than a handful of turns within its twisting corridors before all stopped making sense. Following the drop site massacre of Isvan V, the Night Haunter had captured his brother Vulcan, the Primarch of the Salamanders, and utilize the labyrinth as a means to torture and psychologically break him over a period of several solar months. Angron quickly became trapped within the maze, forever trying to find his way out of the twists and turns and battling assaults by a multitude of traps hidden within the labyrinth. Meanwhile, the traitors on Terra's surface had used a series of rituals to finally weaken the Emperor's psychic barrier around the throne world so that they could deploy their demonic allies onto its surface. The demon Primarch was finally shot from the hold of the Nightfall and into the void of space. Angron soon hurled towards the throne world surface. When the demon Primarch entered Terra's atmosphere, he appeared as a massive flaming meteor. As his body slammed into the surface of Terra, 
The shockwave of the demon Primarch's impact slew friend and foe alike. Wielding the Black Blade, Angron proceeded to rampage through the Loyalist forces, fighting his way to the walls of the Imperial Palace itself. Here he saw his brother, Sanguinius, the angelic Primarch of the Blood Angels, and bellowed a challenge. In response, Sanguinius merely saluted his brother and refused. Before withdrawing back into the confines of the Imperial Palace, Sanguinius claimed that while one day they would battle, it would not be today. The demon Primarch roared in frustration, unable to circumvent the lingering effects of the Emperor's psychic barrier to pursue what he perceived as his cowardly brother into the palace. As the Siege of Terror raged on, during the Battle of the Lion Gate spaceport, Angron destroyed both the Capital Imperialis Super Heavy Imperial Tank and then the Leviathan Transport, but was still unable to advance past the Imperial Palace's walls. But eventually, the Lion's Gate spaceport fell to the traitors when they launched a massive assault. As the Emperor's psychic barrier shrank to encompass the Sanctum Imperialis, Angron led a horde of blood-maddened world eaters onto the Eternity Wall and began slaughtering the Loyalist defenders. Newly blessed with his demonic gifts, Angron and his world eaters overtook the Loyalist defenders of the Eternity Wall. Later, the world eaters had the duty and privilege of leading the frontal assault on the palace. The surviving video logs from that siege show the world eaters breaching the walls of the palace, the twisted red form of Angron wielding his glowing rune sword at his head. Among those first into the breach was Karn. Despite contrary claims of the Sons of Horus, World Eater records indicate that it was Angron's demonic black blade that was responsible for the downfall of the Great Gate of the Imperial Palace. The World Eaters reaped a true harvest of blood on Terra, but they were denied ultimate victory. The rest, as they say, was history. The mighty Chaos armies disintegrated with the loss of their greatest champion and fled from Terra. Angron was the last to leave. Looking back from his dropship, longing for the Imperial Palace, which had stood against even his fury. He led his surviving world eaters deep into the refuge of the Great Warp Rift that was the Eye of Terror. He and his heretical Astartes would now have an eternity to seek revenge as part of the long war against the Corpse Emperor. From this story, we could gather a couple of things. The first thing is obviously that Angron was an extremely aggressive and violent individual, uh, but more importantly, the blessings of the Chaos God Korn basically devolved the Primarch, uh, who's supposed to be like a superhuman being above even the Space Marines, and just reduced him to like this giant ball of rage, destroying things so much so that... Uh, they had to teleport him into a labyrinth in order to keep him calm. Uh, if you if you enjoy that or if you want to learn more about that, uh, check out our 40 facts on the horrible realities of a corn berserker. I'll link it up at the top of this video. Uh, there is a lot of bad things that come from worshipping corn, uh, um, and and worshipping corn is is honorable and it, it gives you martial prowess, but at the same time it debilitates. Uh, it debilitates their worshippers to an extreme extent. The other very important thing is Sanguinius looking at Angron and saying, we will meet again, we're destined to fight. Uh, but as we all know, Sanguinius then confronts uh, Horus. Um, he supposedly dies, but in reality he's in stasis now uh, with, within Bao. And if we see a return of the Primarch Sanguinius, uh, 440k, so for the 42nd millennium, then we will soon see uh, the next Primarch, uh, Demon Primarch, to come out too. So expect uh, Sanguinius coming out, uh, and then obviously Angron coming next, uh, because they are supposed to have an epic battle um, that hasn't yet happened. Uh, at least I don't think it has happened. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have suggestions for any other topics about the Horus Heresy era, just general questions, let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to create a video for you. If not, I'll just answer it right there and then. Uh, thank you guys so much for all of the support that you show us uh, in the comment section, on Instagram, on Facebook, on our Patreon. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, and if you do want to support us, uh, the link is down in the description to our Patreon. It's just a dollar a month. So thank you, and I will talk to you tomorrow. This was Gersh One with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>